Hello everyone, I am Dr. Ashok Jaiswal and today I am going to discuss about role of inhaled corticosteroid and what is the clinical place of triple drug single inhaler therapy in the management of COPD focusing on good 2023 reports. What are the factors we need to consider while adding inhaled corticosteroid treatment to long-acting bronchodilators, LAVA and LAMA? Gold 2023, it strongly favors the use of ICS in addition to long-acting bronchodilators in patient having history of hospitalization for COPD exacerbation or patient having history of two or more than two moderate exacerbation of COPD per year, patient having blood eosinophil counts of more than 300, and if the patient is having history of or concomitant asthma. Goal 23 also favors the usage of inhaled corticosteroid in case the patient is having history of one moderate exacerbation of COPD per year, or the patient is having blood eosinophil count between 100 to 300. However, GOAL 2023 recommends against the usage of ICS in case the patient is having history of repeated pneumonia events or the patient's blood eosinophil count is less than 100 and the patient is having history of mycobacterial infection. This is where we need to avoid addition of inhaled corticosteroid on top of the long-acting bronchodilators. So how should we proceed with initial pharmacological treatment in treatment naive COPD patient? Guideline tells us to categorize such treatment naive COPD patient into one of these three groups, group A, group B or group E. Earlier, we used to have A, B, C, D, four group, but recently in 2023, the group B, C and D are merged into one group of group E. The E stands for predominant trait of exacerbation. That means those patients who have a history of two or more than two moderate exacerbation per year, or the patient is having a history of one hospitalization due to exacerbation those patients will fall into group E and that is where guideline recommends combination of long-acting bronchodilator LABA LAMA. But if such patient having predominant exacerbation trait, they also have eosinophil count of more than 300. That is where guideline recommends triple drug combination, addition of ICS to LABA LAMA. And at the same time, guideline also recommend us to use single inhaler therapy over multiple inhalers because single inhaler is associated with better conveniency, better compliance and better efficacy compared to multiple inhaler. Now how to manage pharmacological treatment during follow up? If patient is responding well appropriately to the initial treatment then maintain it. However, if not, then we must check the adherence, check the inhaler technique and evaluate the possibility of having interfering comorbidities and manage the patient accordingly. We must evaluate the presence of predominant treatable trait during follow-up. That means, is the patient is exhibiting predominantly dyspnea trait or exacerbation trait or the patient is presenting with both the trait of dyspnea as well as exacerbation and then we have to treat accordingly. In case the patient is exhibiting both combined trait of dyspnea and exacerbation, then we need to treat patient keeping exacerbation traits in mind. Guideline recommends we must assess res response, we must review our ongoing treatment and we must adjust the treatment accordingly. Now, in case on follow-up the patient is exhibiting dyspnea as a predominant treatable trait and if the patient is having or the patient is on single long-acting bronchodilator either LABA or LAMA, then we need to switch to combination of long-acting bronchodilator, switch to LABA plus LAMA combination. 
in case the patient is still having dyspnea trait being on combination of lava lama then guideline recommends us to switch to other inhaler device or switch to other molecule we need to escalate the non pharmacological treatment and we need to further investigate the patient for the other causes of dyspnea and treatment accordingly now what if the patient presenting to you with predominant exacerbation trait on follow up and if the patient is already on single long acting bronchodilator either laba or lama then what should we do guideline says look into the blood eosinophil count because patient is having exacerbation now in case the blood eosinophil count is more than 300 then guideline recommends us to switch to triple combination from mono long acting bronchodilator therapy so patient is having exacerbation history of more than uh, or blood eosinophil count more than 300 go for triple lava lama ics combination but what if the patient is having blood eosinophil count less than 300 and on monotherapy then guideline recommends prescribe two drug combination long acting bronchodilator lava plus lama after this two drug combination if the patient is having blood eosinophil count more than 100 then you may switch to triple drug combination of lava lama ics and if the patient is having blood eosinophil count of less than 100 patient is already on two drug combination still he or she is exacerbating then you have two options you may consider roflumilase addition if the patient's fev1 on spirometry is less than 50 percent plus patient is having chronic bronchitis or you may consider adding azithromycin preferentially in patient having history of smoking right now what if the patient is on triple drug combination of lava lama ics and the patient develops events of pneumonia that is where guideline recommends de-escalation of ics therapy from triple combination and switch to the dual combination of two long acting bronchodilators lava and lama so this is how we should be managing the pharmacological treatment during follow-up and that is how we need to identify the placement of triple drug combination with lava lama and ics now what are the evidences based on which the guidelines are recommending addition of ics to combination of long-acting bronchodilators we have two major randomized controlled clinical trial both of them are published recently in new england journal of medicine one is published in 2018 that is impact trial and another got published in 2020 that is ethos trial now what is impact impact is a double blind randomized controlled clinical trial involving more than 10000 patients with copd they all were assigned to 52 weeks once daily treatment either with triple drug combination having uh, ics lama and lava combination of fluticasone furoate umeclidinium and velantrol or the patient may assign to either of these due to drug combination that is ff and velantrol that is ics lava combination and umeclidinium and velantrol that is lava lama combination the primary outcome was the annual rate of moderate or severe copd exacerbation during the treatment now what are the results primary endpoint the triple drug combination of lava lama ics was found to be associated with significant 15 percent reduction in the risk of moderate to severe exacerbation compared to ics lava combination of fluticasone furoate and villentral combination the difference was found to be statistically significant but what about a triple drug compare in comparison to lava lama combination in that way the triple drug combination was associated with significant 25% reduction in the risk of moderate to severe exacerbation
compared to lava lama combination of eumeclidinium and villanthrol but what about the effect of triple drug combination on all cause mortality in this impact trial the triple drug combination was found to be associated with significant 42% reduction in the risk of mortality compared to two drug combination arm of eumeclidinium villanthrol so ics lava lama combination is associated with lesser risk of mortality compared to lava lama combination now what is ethos trial ethos is once again a long term 52 weeks phase 3 randomized controlled clinical trial involving more than 8500 patients having moderate to very severe copd and they were assigned to one of these four arm those four arms were number one uh, high dose uh, cortic inhaled corticosteroid arm that is budesonide 320 glycopyrrolate 18 and formoterol 9.6 microgram the second arm was a low dose ics triple drug combination that is budesonide 160 glycopyrrolate 18 and formoterol 9.6 microgram the third arm was two drug combination of uh, lava lama that is glycopyrrolate and formoterol and fourth group was ics lava combination of budesonide plus formoterol and the primary endpoint was the annual rate of moderate or severe copd exacerbation and here are the results the single inhaler triple therapy of ics lava lama that is budesonide plus glycopyrrolate plus formoterol combination that triple arm was associated with significantly lowered risk of moderate or severe exacerbation compared to dual therapy of lava lama or compared to dual therapy of ics lava the risk of death from any cause all cause mortality was significantly reduced by 46 percent in patient assigned to triple drug combination having budesonide 320 microgram compared to patient assigned to two drug arm of lava plus lama combination so ethos trial is another trial which showed significant reduction in all cause mortality in triple combination single inhaler arm compared to two drug combination lava lama arm so what are the major take home points from our today's discussion that ics in combination with two long acting bronchodilators lava lama plays important role in copd patients having history of hospitalization due to copd exacerbation or patient having history of two or more than two moderate copd exacerbation in last year and patient having blood eosinophil count more than 300 guideline also recommends uh, usage of single inhaler containing triple combination in such patient because single inhaler device is associated with better conveniency compliance and efficacy compared to multiple inhalers we need to consider de-escalation of inhaled corticosteroid from the triple combination in case patient develops pneumonia events or other considerable side effects triple combination with ics lava lama it is associated with significant reduction in all cause mortality compared to lava lama combination and this is as per two recently published large randomized clinical studies ethos and impact thank you very much for your patient hearing